My friends, welcome to this episode of the Outdoor Gear Review. I hope you all are doing well. Over the last maybe six months or so, there's been a Chinese marketplace that's opened up that's become fairly popular. This site is known as Timu. Maybe popular isn't the right word, but nonetheless, it's definitely gained some attention, namely for very inexpensive products. Because of all the interest generated from this website, I've received countless emails and messages in regards to reviewing some of their products. It's because of those requests that I'm here today. I have ordered four products from Timu that I'm going to test out and review. This is the first one. Out of those products that I purchased, two are tents. A very budget-friendly tent, and also a mid-range budget tent. That one is from a name brand company, and you will get to see that product next week. For this episode, we are focusing on the budget tent, the El Cheapo. This runs $53, folks. And the name of this product on the Timu website is the Professional Waterproof and Windproof Tent for Mountaineering, Camping, and Hiking. You all will find this interesting. On Timu, there are a few photos of this tent having been set up. And in those photos, I noticed that the company blurred out the logo. I was curious about this. When I received the tent, I now know why. On the storage bag here, it says the Grand Canyon Apex One. Grand Canyon is a company and the Apex One is one of their tents. Someone, maybe the manufacturer of this tent, is selling the tent on Timu for half the price. On the official Grand Canyon website, the Apex One sells for 100 euros. That, my friends, is why the logo has been blurred out on the Timu website. They're trying to hide this information from Grand Canyon, whomever this company is. I've never heard of them before. Why don't we stop there for now and let's take a look at what you get with this tent. Because the truth is, I have no idea basically what this tent is. I saw a few pictures on the Timu listing that showed the design of the tent, but that's it. There's no information on the Timu website other than the fact that this tent is made from polyester. That's it. All of the pictures on the Timu listing are taken from a distance, so you really can't tell what you're looking at. I don't know what the poles are, I'm not really sure what the materials are, and I have no idea what's included with this tent. So let's take a look at it together. By the way, my name is Luke, this is the Outdoor Gear Review. Thanks for tuning in. Here we have the storage bag for the Grand Canyon Apex One. You have a handle in the middle and a draw pull at the top. Folks, I have to say, I'm so excited to check this out. So we have information here about the Grand Canyon Apex One. There's setup instructions and so on. Wow, I had no idea, everybody. So. This is a $50 tent that feels and looks like a $50 tent. Very interesting. This is the body here, and it uses that cheap tarp material. Here we have the fly. We'll come back to that as well very soon. Right here we have the tent stakes, and they are really, really heavy. And this is why. We have some steel shepherd hooks. And here are the poles. And with these poles, they are made from fiberglass. Let's take a second here and let's attach the poles to the tent and then we'll take a look at what we got here. With the poles, these are made from fiberglass. We have two longies and a shorty. The longies are for the body and the shorty is a cross member. The main body has been set up. All of that was rather easy. We have pole sleeves, and basically you have grommets in each of the corners. With the cross member, I should have attached that before I rectified the tent, but I was able to get it set up this way. I didn't see that sleeve on the side. Anyways, now that this is set up, I have to say, folks, I like this. I like the overall design of this tent itself. Unfortunately, the materials are cheap, really, really cheap, and the quality is questionable. But again, we're talking about a tent that costs 50 bucks. For $50, so far, I'm impressed. Now everybody, let's go on the inside and let's take a look at this tent. 
what I see here right off the bat is a tent that's rather large. This is impressively long. Here in a second, I'll grab the tape measure and we'll measure it. At the same time, it's fairly high. You can easily sit up inside of this tent if you're sitting on your bottom, not on your knees like I am. The overall quality of this tent is questionable. There's quite a few loose threads. I have a couple runs in the mesh over here. Nothing deal breaking, but this is without a doubt a low quality tent. On the inside, you have two mesh pockets. You have a hook at the top and you also have a bathtub floor. The door to the tent is rather large and it's easy to get into and out of this tent. This is a one person tent that's large enough for one person plus gear or one person plus dog. Also, I should mention that the amount of mesh on this tent is very impressive. That's going to translate to very good airflow. Something else I've noticed with the bathtub floor, it has not been seam taped. There's one small section where some stitching has been done. That is going to be a weak point. And because it hasn't been seam taped, you will have to seam seal it or it's going to leak. That's if you have water underneath your tent. So the Apex One has been fully set up now. It's all staked out. This tent has some very interesting features that I didn't expect to see on such a cheap tent. First off, this tent has three separate vents. It has three guy lines that are pre-attached to the tent itself. And the fly for the tent actually pulls away from the body so that if condensation is an issue, it's not laying directly against the inner. You have a storm flap that goes over the zipper. The door can be tied back and the seams on the fly have been taped. Now folks, it needs to be mentioned that attaching the fly to the tent itself was not easy. And that's because on the inside of the fly, there's no way to attach the fly to the poles. So basically you have this fly that's just laying on top. So if you don't stake it out correctly in the front, on the sides, and in the back, you'll have a situation where the material's sticking too far to one side or the other to be able to pull it over the entire tent. I was able to do it, it didn't take too much work, but it's not as easy as it could be. But again, we're talking about a $50 tent, so I'm not going to complain too much. Real world dimensions, this tent is 75 inches long. 31 inches tall, roughly four feet at the widest, and 22 inches at the narrowest. Continuing to talk about stats, when it comes to the storage size, you're looking at 24 inches long by seven inches wide. The weight of this tent is 5.1 pounds. And as far as the materials go, luckily, I have the Grand Canyon website which can provide some information. The company states this features a geodesic dome design structure. It features outstanding wind resistance. They go on to state that this is a freestanding tent and it doesn't need to be staked out. I disagree 100%. The fly has to be staked out because it doesn't attach to the poles. So if you don't stake it out, the fly's gonna take off. That's funny. The double roof can be removed in dry weather. The double roof? Why do they call the fly a double roof? I have no idea. The tent is constructed from lightweight components and fabrics, minimal weight and small size when stored. All of that is the PU coated floor and double roof with sealed seams. The floor and the double roof are waterproof. We'll test that. The outer tent features a 3000 millimeter hydrostatic head rating and the floor is 4000. Both of those numbers are really high. The floor material is made from polyester and so is the fly. So those are the details that we have for this tent. Now, everybody, let me share with you all my thoughts concerning this so far. The reason why I selected this tent and purchased it is because I like the design of it based upon the pictures that I saw. With this tent set up, I still like the design of it. This tent features a design that you do not often see. In fact, I know there's a tent out there that features something very similar to this, but it doesn't come to mind at the moment. So as far as the design goes, I like it. The one thing we have to keep in mind is that this is a $50 tent. For 50 bucks, 
I'm impressed with what you get here. I certainly would not pay $100 for this. And like what's taking place here as far as like Grand Canyon and Timu, I have no idea. There is an ethical question there that needs to be answered by someone. Does Grand Canyon know that their tents are being sold on Timu for half the price? There's a reason why on Timu, the seller is blurring out the logo. Obviously, they do not want someone to know what this tent is. Yes, the tent is made from polyester. We're talking about cheap materials. The biggest question here is whether or not this is going to be waterproof. Will it leak? I don't know. Honestly, this really could go any which way. The airflow inside of this tent is going to be amazing. There's a ton of space inside of this tent. Setting it up is fairly easy, fairly straightforward. Going back to the materials, I would highly recommend being very, very careful setting this up. This is not a tent that you can manhandle, right? If you ram a rod in, <laughs> that sounds awful, but if you do that, you're gonna tear this thing a new one. <laughs> Uh, let me reword all of that. If you take one of the fiberglass poles and you insert them into the sleeves and you're not careful, you can easily tear a hole in one of those. The same goes for like the grommets where the poles seat. If you're not gentle with seating those, I think you could just tear those out completely. This is a tent that I would personally be a little bit careful with, a little bit delicate with. I do like the colors of this tent. The green and black combination, it looks good. I am surprised by the guy lines. The guy lines are actually very good quality. That is not cheap cordage, and that's surprising to see. On the inside of the tent and also with the fly, the zippers are smooth. And that right there pretty much wraps up this episode, everybody. I am curious to hear what you all think about this tent. Again, this is 50 bucks. For $50, I'm not seeing anything that's like a major fail. The biggest question mark, in my opinion, well, there's two actually. Is this going to be waterproof? We will find out together. Also, does Grand Canyon know about this? I will go ahead and send them a message and see what they have to say. That will be interesting. So in the future, I will comment on that if I get a reply. This tent here has been my first experience with Timu. So far, this is not bad for 50 bucks. Again, I would not spend $100 on this for nothing. But for 50 bucks, I'm intrigued. So coming up soon, I will take this out for an overnight trip and we'll begin testing out this product. And I'm doing this again because there's so much interest in what you can get off of Timu. As I mentioned before, I purchased two tents as a sort of test. We went really, really cheap, and the other tent, I went mid-range. That is a product from Nature Hike. The tent that I found on there is very interesting. I paid $2.50 for it, and get this, it's a hot tent. Nature Hike has an official store on Timu, and that's where I purchased it at. So that episode, again, will be coming up next week. We'll take a look at that tent. For now, folks, I am done. Sound off in the comment section down below. Share your thoughts. If you enjoyed this episode, hit the thumbs up. If you want to see more from Timu, if you want to see more Timu garbage, let me know. Is this garbage? I don't think so. Not yet. I mean, I'm sure Timu has a ton of garbage. Never mind. Anyways, if you enjoyed this episode, hit the thumbs up. I do appreciate it. Everybody, take care. Be well. Strength and honor. By the way, make sure to subscribe because more about this tent will be coming up in the future. Oh, yeah. Oh, 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 oh,